Hello and welcome to Lady Lake Plays the Stanley Parable. Um, you might have seen uh, that I did the demo. I finally got the game. So let's start, shall we? <clears throat> oh, no, I'm going to just argue with this bloke. And yay, for webcam. For actions. I just hope it works. What is never the end? And why are you taking so long to load? Yeah, so uh, basically there'll be a lot more gameplay. I'm thinking of getting some people together to do some collabs of games. Um, so we can have a lot more fun. Well, what do you think about that? Let me know in comments. Um, let me know who you think I should collab with or ask to collab with. And uh, yeah, hopefully this lighting's okay. It is a bit dark out there. <clears throat> but uh, I'm just waffling until the game starts, basically. <sighs> just waiting. And waiting. Why are you taking so long to load? Just have a tea. It was nice. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room form form Ooh, 427 skip, skip, and skip, skip. pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job. Mm. And Stanley Bless was him. happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him oh, instructions. No call a meeting or even say hi never in ever in ever in all his years the company had this <laughs> happened this complete isolation something was very clearly wrong shocked frozen solid stanley found himself unable to move for the longest okay. time but as he came to his wits and regained his senses he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office Do anything here? All right. Step outside the office. All of his co-workers <gasps> were gone. Oh what no! What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Let's do that. Don't you mess up. Meeting room. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What, my left or your left? See, the Hufflepuff in me wants to go left, but the Slytherin in me wants to go right. Let's do it this way first. I know everybody's played this game. So just one door for us to go through then. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, 
Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer then. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker? Oh, that's Going here. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Well, there's lots here. Oh, my mouse is playing up. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. <laughs> Let's just stay in the closet. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, at least, at least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet <coughs> F.A. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I think you find it's down, actually. No point of this. But Stanley just no. couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, 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 he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously it's out of it. existence in a Come single on. moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, Yay! he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his oh, job. No. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't crazy Maybe after not. all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So. He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? <laughs> and then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself. Why is he walking sooner. in circles? Why is there a voice in my head dictating oh. everything that I'm doing and thinking? No. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly <sighs> strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. He oh, don't you thought. crash. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Very tired. Sound like Stephen Fry. He knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. This is boring. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the Let's voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. And he invited himself to wake, wake up. up. 
He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. <laughs> you take me Let back me to the desk? I'm the not going to be happy. Please. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Bugger. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I, mu I, mu I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, dear. 